What an Orwellian week it's been, because when it comes to these TV election debates, we're living in 1984, where war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. And to quote a straight-faced David Cameron, what I've done is put front and center the need to hold a debate, and I haven't put any hurdles in the way. Well, Prime Minister, you could have fooled me. You said today you wanted to break the logjam. But who was the naughty little beaver who piled up all the logs in the first place? I think that would be you, Prime Minister. You want to debate before the campaign begins, but say, we're now short of time. Forgetting to mention, the clock is only ticking because of your own repeated refusals to agree the proposed election debates in the first place. And if all this double think is making your head at home spin and question the Prime Minister's motives, fear not, dear viewer, because Dave today claimed that the very fact he was being asked so many questions about scuppering the debates proves he was right to scupper the debates in the first place. Q.E.D. Rarely has a politician seemed quite so in demand. But invitations, importuning and even accusations of cowardice don't appear to have diluted David Cameron's determination to avoid two of the scheduled three TV leadership debates, including the mooted head-to-head -head with Ed Miliband. So, is he frit? And if so, what of? And will the so-called final offer Downing Street has issued to rivals and to broadcasters, the Prime Minister will do one debate, but only if six other party leaders can join in, prove to be an offer they can refuse? Here's Stephen Smith. Many leaders around the world seem to agree it's good to talk. But what about dear old Blighty? The leaders of the main parties went head to head last time in 2010. Our economy is stuck in a rut. Tonight's debate is about you. There's a lot to this job. 22 and million so people yes, tuned in and many observers felt right, the debates well, influenced the outcome question. of the election. This time around, the Prime Minister's Director of Communications has said Mr Cameron will participate in one TV debate only. And it's not the proposed mano a mano with Labour's Ed Miliband. Ed Miliband and I debate uh, every week in the House of Commons and we'll go on doing that right up to the election campaign. But look, we're now short of time because of the mess, frankly, the broadcasters have made of this. So I'm unblocking the logjam saying let's have this debate, a seven corner debate, get on with it before the campaign. And that is this. His professed view was rather different when he was opposition leader. I have to say to the Prime Minister, if he really thinks that these exchanges once a week are the substitute for a proper television debate, then he's even more out of touch than I thought. Well, it's now clear that David Cameron is ducking the debate with me. He's cowering from the public. The British people deserve this debate. I'll debate him anytime, any place, anywhere. He should stop ducking and weaving, and he should name the date. Hands up, who likes eating? Mr Cameron's reluctance to mix it in a series of debates was meat and drink to his opponents. David Cameron's not going to turn up to the debate with Ed Miliband. You can't have a Miliband monologue, so let's have a debate. I'm prepared to debate with Ed Miliband, and my challenge to Ed Miliband is, if he wants to scrutinise and challenge the record of this coalition government, David Cameron might not be prepared to do it, but I am. BBC executives and other broadcasters have yet to respond to the Tory terms, which would see them stuck with one debate featuring more than half a dozen party leaders. Who do you want to be your next Prime Minister? Letting everyone have their say is one thing, but trying to accommodate the spokespeople of seven, count them, different parties, all in the space of an hour and a half, well, critics say that's bound to get messy. Can I just say, I agree with Steve. Look, the group of seven is a nonsense, isn't it? I mean, it's... Uh... It's not going to work, it's not going to tell us a great deal, isn't it? people aren't going to have time to develop arguments. One-on-one, -on -one, between the two potential future Prime Ministers are emerging from the general election, are having a serious argument over an hour, that is a, a well-worthwhile project, and I think that Cameron, Mr Cameron, 
who up to now had handled it, things very well and sensibly, needs to think again. They're over. Cameron has killed them because he's decided they're a bit of a risk for him. Why do them? I don't blame him for that. But the broadcasters must now accept that for this election, they are dead. Many thought the UK had got the debating bug after the last election. But if today's developments are anything to go by, some will say we're not fully taking part in the global conversation. Grant Shapps, the Conservative Party chairman, joins me now. Um, Mr Shapps, everybody's up for a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, a head-to-head, -head, a Cameron Miliband clash, except your man Cameron. How come? Well, we can have a Cameron Miliband clash. Uh, he's put forward a proposal here to have Cameron Miliband and all the people who may end up uh, propping up a Sorry, Miliband let, 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 me, uh, let me clarify. When I said a Cameron Miliband clash, I meant just them. Yeah. Well, the problem's been that, as you've seen, there have been months, years of negotiation effectively over this, with the broadcasting companies coming forward with one set of plans after another, all of which were defective because for the first time they didn't include the Greens, then they uh, decided to come forward with another set of plans, didn't include the DUP, who have, I understand, gone to a, a court challenge on it. The whole thing has not been covered in glory as far as, I think, the broadcasters every are concerned. Other party and even today... Uh, has accommodated these uh, machinations, these negotiations. I think Mr Miliband has uh, employed a martini catchphrase, hasn't he? Any time, any place, anywhere. So you, you tell him when you'd like to do it, or when your leader would like to do it. Which is not true that every other party has accommodated it. We've had the Greens, for example, bizarrely left out of the first proposal, even though they actually got an MP elected in the last parliament, and then they included other parties a UKIP who didn't get anyone I, Again, elected. let me clarify, And then they Mr. come Shapps, back with a set of proposals. Forgive me. I, again, let me clarify. When I said that they'd accommodated it, I, I meant simply that they are all up for the three scheduled TV debates as defined, except Mr Cameron's involvement in the head-to-head -head with Ed Miliband. Let, let me just remind well, you of some... Let me just, if I may, remind you of some of the things he said on the subject of a head-to-head -head clash between the Prime Minister and the leader of Her Majesty's opposition. This, of course, in a letter he wrote to Gordon Brown in 2007. It's true, of course, that we have the opportunity to debate matters at Prime Minister's questions, but that is a very different matter to a proper television debate during a general election campaign, when Parliament is not sitting and when people will be most receptive to engaging in political discussion. What's changed, Mr Shapps? Well, nothing's changed other than there were five years, five years during which to get this sorted out. This is the first time ever we've had a fixed term parliament. Everyone knew this election was coming in May 2015. So the broadcasters had adequate time to sort that out. Despite that, they didn't involve the political parties. It's not true to say that everyone's happy, as I pointed out. The but, Greens and the DUP certainly aren't. And there have been various different proposals that have come forward, none of which have uh, really satisfied uh, everyone. So what David Cameron said now is that let's cut through this. Let's cut through the chaff. That's here's a proposal. Not let's true, have is a it? Debate. Everybody let's have all else. seven leaders. Everybody and let's else, have it right now. Everybody else is going to turn up, except Mr Cameron. What has changed? Why has his appetite? for this wonderful fight, this 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 man-to-man -man clash, dissipated so completely and so entirely, so close to Judgment Day. No, let's be clear. I actually, we think these debates are a great idea. We think they suck the life out of a general election campaign if they're held during the campaign itself. That was the evidence last time when they actually happened. So we've always said that it would be better well, if Hang they on, I just read you the letter in which campaign. he said a proper television to debate you, during a general election it's campaign. I'm quoting yeah, David Cameron to you. Three of them. I know we've got a bit of delay here, but we had three of them during the last election, right? And what did happen is they literally sucked the life out of the campaign. Now, I know that they will um, attract, certainly one of them, a good audience. That's true. When leaders go on that, they're sort of in broadcast mode. What you want to happen in a general election campaign during that fine period of the campaign, the three, four weeks, is you want the leaders out in the country, you want them to be in listening mode, hearing what people have to say, let, 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 so you let, don't want all the life sucked out. But let, fine, let's, let's, have move a, on let's have the debate. Let's, move, let's well, no, do it now. No, we're let's talking it about a head-to-head -head debate. We, we know the debate he's agreed to. Let me bring you um, something a little more current, perhaps, January the 14th of this year. He said, there are two credible sets of debates. You can either have a debate with all the national parties who appear in this House, or, Mr Shapps, you can have a debate between the two people who would become Prime Minister. Those are the credible debates. I'll ask you again, what's changed? Well, look, if the broadcasters had actually come forward with these proposals in the first place, 
that certainly would have helped. We're now, what, 63 days from the general election itself. Any one time, any place, anywhere, evident. says Mr Miliband. OK, one thing... Let me finish. One thing's become um, very evident, and that is that there are two outcomes, one of which is David Cameron Cameron is on being leader. We need 11,200 people to vote in a different way in just 23 constituencies uh, in total across 23 constituencies. With, with respect, Mr. Shelton, you're just, you're just talking term now. The majority. Why, let me why finish the point. Why doesn't hold on, Mr. Cameron hold on, hold on, want Let me the finish debate. the point. Conservatives are then returned with a majority. Or, and this has become apparent this year, hasn't it? Uh, we can have Ed Miliband propped up by probably the SNP. Alex Salmon's made that clear. Propped up by possibly even other parties, including... You're, you're, you're uh, not even so pretending to answer my clear, question. You need to have other people in that debate. Well, great. So why doesn't Mr Cameron want to debate the leader of Her Majesty's opposition in front of his electorate? Uh, As he told he you. Does. And actually, today, he's put forward a plan, which I noticed, by the way, uh, yesterday, I noticed, by the way, today hasn't been answered. It's odd, for example, that there's nobody from the BBC or any of the other broadcasters who are prepared to come on and do what I'm doing this evening, which is to answer the question about the well, With respect, you're uh, not. Why aren't they there? Why haven't they responded in the last day? Well, what there what is question do you think you've have answered? Debate, have all seven leaders on. We can get this thing done. Why doesn't he want to debate the leader of Her Majesty's opposition? He, he does, and he debates okay. the leaders of, uh, leader of Her Majesty's opposition every single week. But the fact of the matter is, we can have a debate in the next three weeks and have Ed Miliband there. Um, let's get this thing done. I don't know what the delay is, and I don't know why the broadcasters have suddenly gone quiet today uh, when they seem to have had plenty to say about it in the past. Grant Shapps, many thanks. I have to say to the Prime Minister, if he really thinks that these exchanges once a week are the substitute for a proper television debate, then he's even more out of touch than I thought. Yeah. We have to be honest with ourselves, not many people watch these exchanges. <laughs> and not all those that do are hugely impressed with them. There are parliamentary systems that do have television debates. We've seen them in Italy, in Australia, in Poland. And I have to ask you, the Prime Minister has no, has no um, in principle objection, when he was Shadow Chancellor, he did a television debate against my right honourable friend, the, the then Chancellor of the Exchequer. So I have to ask him, what on earth is he frightened of?